The process of obtaining IP addresses from a DHCP server isn't exactly like a two-way message exchange process. Instead, it is similar to the process of purchasing a backpack from an online store. You first of all discover available online stores for backpacks through a wide search. Next, each store displays offers for you to make choices. These offers could come in the form of discounts or bonuses. After selecting an offer, you request for the item by making payment. And finally, the acknowledgement comes when the actual item is shipped to your location. This process is similar to the exchange of DHCP messages on a computer network. Today, we'll talk about DHCP operations. Hello guys, we'll talk about the operations of DHCP. DHCP is an application layer protocol primarily designed to provide dynamic IP address allocation services on a network. Services running on servers are reachable through IP addresses and port addresses or port numbers. At layer 3, IP addresses are used for communication and at layer 4, port numbers are used. These port numbers could be TCP or UDP. Think of TCP as a way of saying that before you send data, make sure to have an active connection to your destination. This gives you control over the data transfer, but for UDP, you don't need to know if the destination is reachable or not. Just go ahead to send the data. DHCP runs on UDP port number 67 on servers and uses this port for sending and receiving DHCP messages. The clients that request these services from a DHCP server use the UDP port number 68 for communication. Different ports are used to ensure that the DHCP broadcast messages meant for servers are not processed by clients. When DHCP is enabled on a client computer for the first time, it enters a DHCP initializing state and begins to broadcast a DHCP discover message. This is done to find active DHCP servers on the link. As a broadcast message, it is sent to the destination IP address 255.255.255.255 for local broadcast and the all F's destination MAC address. As this client does not yet have an IP address, it uses the source IP address 0.0.0.0 and the source MAC address is the MAC address of the interface sending the DHCP discover message. Moving on, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you'll be the first to know when we release a new video like this one. These broadcast packets will be sent at intervals until a packet hits the interface of a server on which DHCP is configured. Only DHCP servers can respond to this broadcast because it is sent to UDP port 67. A server receiving this broadcast will send a DHCP offer message directly to the client containing the IP address that the server is offering. This DHCP offer packet is sent to UDP port 68. Think of a DHCP offer message as a slip containing a description of the parameters that a server is willing to assign to the client. A DHCP client, on receiving this message, will enter the selecting state. The reason is, more servers may exist on the link with each sending its own DHCP offer message as they may have also received the broadcast. The DHCP client preferentially selects the first DHCP offer message received, enters the requesting state, and generates a DHCP request message. The mechanism for selecting a specific offer may be different based on implementation. The source and destination IP and MAC address information for sending the DHCP request message is the same as in the discovery stage. This message is sent as a broadcast at layer 2. One reason it is broadcast is to ensure that all servers whose offer was rejected by the client are aware so they withdraw their offers. Finally, the server whose offer was accepted by the client then sends a DHCP acknowledgement message in unicast mode to the client. 
At this point, the client checks the uniqueness of this address and if unique, enters a binding state with the server and initializes its TCP IP protocol stack with the received configurations. In some cases, the server may send a DHCP negative acknowledgement message instead to the client after receiving the DHCP request message. More of these concepts will be discussed in the DHCP Other Messages presentation. We'll discuss DHCP timers in the next video. Until then, please subscribe and turn on bell notifications. See you in the next one and thanks for watching.